क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम इकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू द सब्जेक्ट डिजिटल इमेज प्रोसेसिंग दिस वीडियो इज फ्रॉम चैप्टर नंबर 4 द चैप्टर इज टाइटल्ड इमेज एनहांसमेंट इन स्पेशल डोमेन एज पर एज द टर्म इमेज एनहांसमेंट इज कंसर्न इट इज द इमेज प्रोसेसिंग टेक्निक द फैमिली इट इज फॉर द इमेज प्रोसेसिंग वेयर वी ट्राई टू हैव एनहांसमेंट इनटू द बेटर पिक्चर क्वालिटी with respect to the human vision perception so in this family the changes for getting the new image we can do in the spatial domain which refers to the image plane itself or we can do into the transform domain most possibly the frequency domain in this chapter we have collected whatever the enhancement methods are there working on to the image plane itself hence the name image enhancement in spatial domain in this family we first of all started to learn what are the basics behind intensity transformations and spatial filtering whenever we are trying to obtain the new intensity values after image processing working on to the pixel only so that time we term them intensity transformations and when the new intensity values are determined with respect to the neighborhood intensity values of the original image pixel so that time we call it to be the spatial filtering so in both these particular principal areas of image enhancement we have gone through the topics like the image negative the log transformation and power law transformations along with we have seen the practical demonstrations with the help of matlab software for brightness enhancement and brightness separation image negative log transformation and corresponding power law transformation which is more precise as compared to the previous one now it's time to have the information with respect to how to change the contrast with respect to the image so that the enhancement into the visualization can be done so let us begin with the topic contrast adjustment so here we begin with the topic contrast adjustment the chapter title image enhancement in spatial domain and one of the promising uh, simple technique into the digital image processing so as per as the contrast adjustment is concerned whatever the previous approaches we have seen for intensity transformations the image negatives log transformation power law transformation so with respect to these earlier methods this method is a complementary approach and it belongs the use of the piece wise linear functions so here we can separate out the family also so those are having the piece wise linear functions in the operations so very first of all that and the simplest one is the contrast adjustments so the principal ad, uh, advantage of having this particular method for image enhancement is that the piece wise linear functions over the previous types of the functions is that the form of the piece wise functions can be arbitrarily complex here next the practical implementation if you want to do with this particular techniques for the improvement and the important transformations using so it can be formulated as only the piece wise function next we can have the topic for the contrast adjustment like this or sometimes it is also referred to as contrast stretching so if it is the case of simple contrast adjustment so whatever the input image it will be there so with the total number of pixels there present into the image we shall be doing the scaling of all the pixels by a constant k so simply it will be the multiplication of k constant with the input image so here f of mn represents the input image that is to be enhanced by the use of contrast and enhancement so it shall be having a multiplication with the constant k so each and every pixel intensity shall be scaled to a new intensity level so that the new image form the output image after contrast adjustment we can refer by the g of mn here now for contrast adjustment we can say that changing the contrast of the image it changes the range of luminance values present into the image so luminance refers to the brightness into the image so that the better visualization we expect to obtain specifying the value of k so we can have the cases like the k can be greater than 1 k can be equal to 1 k can be less than 1 if we have k equal to 1 so there will not be any change into the input image pixel intensities so it won't be a contrast adjustment now if you select them k greater than 1 it will increase the contrast by making bright samples more brighter 
and dark samples more darker. Now, if the value of k on the another hand, if we select less than one, so in that case, it will do the opposite procedure and it will reduce the smaller range of the samples. Now, the next term we talked about this particular topic, it is sometimes also referred to as contrast stretching. So, it is one of the type of transformation. So, in this transformation, we can introduce it as one of the very simplest piecewise linear function and low contrast images if we are transformed using this particular topic that is contrast stretching. So, it can result into the poor illumination, lack of dynamic range in the imaging sensor, uh, sensor or even the wrong setting of the lens aperture during the image acquisitions. So, because of these particular causes, we require this particular transformation of contrast stretching. So, the idea behind this particular contrast stretching is to increase the dynamic range of the gray levels as we have just talked about contrast adjustment also. So, next figure we shall see. So, it shows a typical transformation used for the contrast stretching purpose. So, here we have the figure that has four parts A, B, C and D here and here it is the nomenclature. So, this is actually the contrast stretching and the very first part what we see here so, a graph we find here. So, it is representing part A of the image form of a transformation function. So, in this particular graph, you can see here there are two axes, the horizontal one. So, it is actually input gray levels mapped onto this particular axis and here we have represented it with the help of small r. So, it ranges from 0 to L minus 1 if capital L are the total number of intensity levels or gray levels we can refer. So, we can go from 0 to L by 4, L by 2, 3 L by 4 and then L minus 1. Similar is the case to have a mapping of the output gray levels. So, output gray levels are represented here by small s. So, a relationship between the input gray levels r and that of the output gray levels s that can be done with the help of such a uh, graph here. So, the graph can have such a form here. So, in this particular graph, you can see there, there is actually a linear relationship up to this particular point. This has been represented by R1, S1. Then again, uh, it is having linear relationship which uh, we are representing S is given by the transformation factor capital T worked onto the input gray level intensities R here and it is up to the point R to S2 and further it again changes its particular angle or direction but still it is a linear one. Now we are having B, C and D parts. B image is the input image which is to be utilized with the help of contrast stretching. So it is basically a low contrast image you can see here. Now after contrast stretching and having this kind of nature uh, having the relation between the new output intensities with respect to the uh, original input intensities. So, we obtain the contrast stretched image and that has been shown in the part C. So, you can see that the visualization is better as compared to the earlier low contrast image. Now, after a thresholding operation if you do, so because in total we are having 0 to L minus 1 total number of gray levels capital L. So, if we set a threshold in between, uh, to discard some intensity levels. So, that time the thresholding operation we can have and the resultant thresholded image we can obtain. So, that is shown into the part D here. Now, more discussion about the results what we have seen. The location of the points R1, S1 we have seen also R2, S2 we have seen. They control the shape of this particular transformation function. So, if you change these particular locations, the graph will have certain another nature and the resultant images will be of some different kind. If we keep R1 is equal to S1 and R2 is equal to S2, so if this change you can do, so that time you will find a straight line. So the transformation we can call it is a linear function and that produces no changes into the gray levels. So as far as the contrast adjustment we have seen, so it is simple multiplication of every pixel by a constant k, so it will be a multiplication by 1 only. Now, uh, instead, if we keep R1 is equal to R2 and S1 is equal to 0 and S2 we obtain by L minus 1, the transformation of this particular type 
becomes a thresholding function what we have shown into uh, last portion here so that creates a binary image that creates a binary image now the intermediate values of r1 s1 and r2 s2 that we have represented by a straight line they produces various degrees of spread in the gray levels of the output image thus affecting its particular contrast so it may happen that a small range of input gray levels are spread to a wide range of output gray levels or vice versa also is possible in that particular case now in general if we take r1 less than or equal to r2 and also s1 is less than or equal to s2 so it is assumed that because of this particular one the function is a single valued and it is increasing monotonically this condition if we have r1 less than r2 and s1 less than s2 this condition particularly preserves the order of gray levels into the images and thus preventing the creation of intensity artifacts in the process image that are not desired in such a case now in this particular diagram we have seen the four parts the figure b shows the 8 bit image with low contrast we discuss the figure c what we have seen as the result of contrast stretching so it shows it by obtaining and with the setting r1 s1 is equal to r minimum comma 0 and r2 comma s2 obtained with r maximum and l minus 1 so if we keep the two the resultant image for the pollen grains it is actually there we can have the uh, exact visualization so here r minimum and r maximum denote the minimum and maximum gray levels in the image for the pollen grain image so if you take any another image also and set these parameters like this you can obtain the contrast stretching so thus the transformation function what we have so it is stretching the levels linearly from the original range to the full range so the range here it is 0 to capital l minus 1 finally the last figure we have shown for the thresholding operation so it shows the result of using thresholding function defined and here we have r1 is equal to r2 is equal to m here the m is actually the mean of the gray levels into the image so if it is the 8 bit environment and we are having the total 0 to 255 number of gray levels so that time for the concerned image we can have the mean of available gray levels and put it equal to r1 equal to r2 equal to m that particular value so here the original image on which these results are based is actually a scanning electron microscope image for pollen and it is magnified approximately 700 times so at this much of small level practically uh, the object was there and by having this particular uh, arrangement we can have the visualization and further analysis and it can be used for end applications we can say so here again we can have the overlook onto the diagram where we have discussed parts a b c and d so this is actually the graph with which changing the values of r1 s1 and r2 s2 we can do different type of contrast stretching so uh, in short it is nothing but the contrast adjustment by the next lecture we shall be having a practical demonstration on to the contrast enhancement uh, by having a value of k to get it multiplied to each and every pixel into the image so that uh, we can select the value of k at different uh, values and uh, we can obtain the resultant images with better visualization so i hope you are understood with what exactly the contrast adjustment or contrast stretching is concerned about it is one of the image enhancement method work into the spatial domain so if you want to like to have more topics like this and more details of the subject digital image processing you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you